Well, I do have a special edition of the show as I will be joined by sports agent and author Lee Steinberg. You may know him. I'm sure you do. He's been the agent for Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Patrick Mahomes, more recently author of many books and a 40 plus year career in the sports world as we're going to talk about the Namar Hamlin situation. So I now will bring him on. Lee, first off, thanks for joining me. Again, Lee Steinberg, sports agent and author. My pleasure. Absolutely. So, Lee, first off, obviously, at least in my years of covering football and covering the NFL and college football, I hadn't seen anything like the DeMar Hamlin situation in Monday Night Football, especially with an ambulance on the field and CPR being administered and having the announcement that it was administered. I did cover the Ryan Stays year game, obviously, where that was similar. And he, for a while, was going to maybe be a paraplegic. He's since kind of recuperated his life, but that ended his football career. And that was a very serious injury in the midst of a very rough game, also ironically in Cincinnati. But obviously you've been around the block a lot longer. What were your initial reactions when you were seeing and, and hearing about what happened to DeMar Hamlin, on a 24 year old second year in the league star safety for the Buffalo bills. And he's actually a, a Pittsburgh product, Pittsburgh central Catholic pit, and even from the area of Pittsburgh, actually from McKeesport, seeing what happened to him. And then if there's anything you can compare it to outside of just the Ryan says year game, because that's what I point to most recently, but this was even different than that from what really I watched from what I experienced and even from what others have mentioned. Rarely do you see a NFL event that transcends the narrow group of hardcore NFL fans right. and jumps out to become a national issue this way. And I think part of it shows the insulation that a typical fan or a non-fan feels from the way football is actually played. Because if you're watching on television, you're not hearing the hitting. And when you're um, In the stands, you're also not hearing the hitting. So you're insulated from the reality of of carefully trained athletes who are bigger, stronger, faster, who hit each other like on a traffic accident on every play. And um, so we're used to seeing players injured and carted off the field. What we're not used to seeing is that it might be a matter of life and death. And so what what allowed this to rise to a different level was, first of all, it was Monday Night Football, which is watched by a bigger audience. Second of all, it uh, there was a delay that is totally unusual and not a lot of information. So it raised people's anxiety levels. And, um, but, but again, those people who stand on the sideline and watch the game yeah. are aware of the monumental force that occurs. And the real um, issue is that I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often that someone would suffer monu- uh, catastrophic um uh, health concerns yeah. really shows you that football players are a unique group of athletes and that their bodies are able to take more hitting and uh, more pain than a typical person. And their ability to rehabilitate is much more rapid than a normal person because otherwise they get eliminated at the high school collegiate level and seen as injury prone, but um, that's it. So, and I think for players who generally are in a state of denial, in other words, since Pop Warner, they've been acculturated to ignore the risk in playing and to think of long-term health as uh, an abstraction. So where you and I would think long-term health is the most important issue and 
a much lower priority would be the ability to play this season and then below that the ability to play in this game yeah. and then the lowest value the least important thing would be the ability to play this play the football player turns that on its head and this play becomes the most critical issue and long-term health becomes an abstraction so it's called denial and it's being able to ignore and displace the normal fear factor and and self-protectiveness that would happen so i think it was a shock for a number of players because they're used to the fact that injuries occur the players are driven off the field but not seeing an ambulance on the field and not seeing uh going for an extended period of time without knowing whether this player would live or die. And you see CPR being administered and then also the scene of seeing players openly crying and more than just getting on one knee. It, it was more than just that, which you always see anytime any player goes down for any length of time, everyone gets on one knee because you don't know what could happen, what the result could be. It is a car crash sport. It, it really, really is, as you mentioned. But the, the players openly weeping, then you have the delay of game. You never end up playing again. You have the commentary being so open with the CPR was administered, the ambulance is on the field. That's a different level of, I think, the audience being in the know. It's not the first time CPR has probably ever been done on a football field. I'm sure it has before. But we're, we were told. We were in the know of what was going on. They never played again. They had this five-minute break period in the rules, and then the coaches got together and basically said that wasn't enough time. They go back in the locker room. All of that is different than really any other experience we've seen in sports. And, and you mentioned, obviously, these hits and these situations have happened throughout the history of the NFL and other sports, but nothing really to this severity with this much of a break and then having the game not played not finishing that game, having it be postponed, et cetera. Talking with Lee Steinberg here, sports agent and author, about the Namar Hamlin situation. And you mentioned also being a supreme athlete. That also is part of him being able to fight this too. They have also mentioned that. The Bills have mentioned that. Medical team has mentioned that. That's a big aid in him and being able to fight this. But, you know, I've talked with a bunch of athletes. You have as well. I'm sure you had some of your clients. Two of the three that I mentioned there in Traquin and Steve Young – Hall of Fame quarterbacks, but they didn't get to have the long career that Patrick Mahomes hopes to have. They they had to retire earlier than they would have wanted because of concussions and other injuries. So you throw up a Google search for anybody who doesn't know, you're looking at an 11-year career. You wish it would have been longer, but they eventually had to have the come to Jesus meeting that maybe you even had with them that, hey, if you want to have a great life, you do have to stop. So I do want to also ask you about what – you think right now, and obviously that's not a concern right now for DeMar Hamlin because he's fighting for his life, but right now based on this event, do you think right now this is going to lead to anything else in terms of a collective bargaining agreement? They just added another game and another week to the season to get this extra playoff team. It's more money for the players and more teams to get in, but they gained things like marijuana and other things and kind of gave up maybe their safety by playing more football. Is this going to lead to more collective bargaining agreements, this being brought up in those agreements, the players wanting to be more in control of player safety? And have you had any conversation with any former players? Troy Aikman would actually be one in particular because he was on the broadcast. Have you spoken to Troy about, hey, what are your thoughts on this? I haven't, but, um, you know, I, Troy and I spent many, many years together. Um, right. I had a crisis of conscience back in the late 80s and early 90s because players kept getting hit in the head and when we would go to doctors to ask how many are too many and what's the magic number to consider retirement they had no answer they didn't know then right we've learned so much more with chris nowinski who i talked to former wb wrestler and harvard football player he'd done a lot with concussion research and we've seen that creep up it's not the Demar hamill situation it's cardiac arrest but we've right. seen that bring be brought up with what happened to Tua and others this year. Can he pick at multiple concussions this season? He's still out there as they're fighting for the playoffs. There was a conversation weeks ago if they would shut him down. These players want to play, especially when they're in the race. But we do know a lot more about concussions than we knew back then. 
and you are seeing some athletes choose to walk away from the game in the middle of their career. Andrew Luck, middle of a career that probably won't get him in Canton someday, despite he definitely would have got there if he kept going. He just didn't want to keep on on going. So I've seen I, more of those decisions than ever before. Oh, like I felt, uh, as I said, the crush is a conscience, and I thought I can't represent players unless I do something. And we started to hold concussion conferences back in the early 90s with neurologists and different people looking for a solution. And I've held 17 cents and I'm gonna hold another one with neurologists, helmet manufacturers, turf manufacturers. Um, the encouraging news on the concussion front is there are some new methods from the concept of neuroplasticity that say that the brain doesn't necessarily have to degrade, it can get better. And okay. And one of them is called RTMS, and the other one is Nestry Brain Training. And they are able to, to grow newer neurons and, and heal. <clears throat> so um, I've made sure that our players are totally aware of the fact that at one of the concussion conferences, they said three or more concussions leads to an exponentially higher rate of Alzheimer's, uh, premature senility, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, uh, Parkinson's, and depression. So um, we talk this out. My best allies on any of these health issues tend to be the wives, girlfriends, or families. I would imagine, yeah. Right. But the athlete themselves is in concussion. So I think they had a dramatic moment. Uh, that might have broken denial for a number of players to see the the potential uh, gross consequences. But um, I think very soon they'll just go back to their typical denial and uh, put it out of their mind in the same way that people know that they're going to die, <coughs> but don't think about it every microsecond. To be able to play that sport right. requires the ability to deny the risk and not see the worst uh, consequence. I try to get players to see it, but, but they will look at you as if you don't understand how critical and vital it is to play this player this week. Right. And, and also it's their ultimate dream. And there are those who will bring up and it's true. And the players have recognized this too. And this was brought up by Ryan Clark and others, even after what happened to Mar Hamlin that, while these players are human, and sometimes we forget that when we're covering and watching them, they are human beings with families, etc. This is a real life guy. This isn't just a video game for entertainment. They also are entering their career and their life goal, understanding, generally speaking, understanding the risks. Now, we know a lot more now than back then. So when you were starting your career, they may not have fully known what they were getting into, especially in terms of concussions. But we've seen play situations like this even going back many, many years ago in terms of the heart and getting knocked out on plays and players laying on the ground for long periods of time. And it was seen as, you know, got to toughen up and get back out there. And players, we've actually saw that a couple couple days ago in the NFL, even a day before what happened to Mar Hamlin with a player celebrating when Nick Foles was down. And, oh, and that just right. seemed all kinds of crazy based on what we now know about what happened to Mar Hamlin. But it is a major risk, but there's also a major reward. I mean, I'm sure you've had many conversations with Raikman, as you said. Obviously, his career had to cut shorter than he would have wanted. He dealt with many concussions. We don't even know how many he had. But if you would have told him – 30 plus years ago, you're going to have four or five concussions, have a short career, but you're going to win three championships. You're going to go to the Hall of Fame. You're going to have a great broadcasting career. You're going to be renowned as one of the best QBs of all time. Same thing for Young and whoever else. I don't know if he would say, I don't want to do it. He probably would say, I'll still go ahead and have that career because that's what I wanted to achieve and, and had that success. Lee Steinberg here, sports agent and author. And Lee, what I do want to ask you about – the the Mar Hamlin incident because we talked about obviously it was a traumatic tragic event and he's fighting for his life and you don't want to see that for anybody and it's still different than what we've experienced but there was a weirdness to how it was handled you had the five minute delay 
coaches come out, players come out, the players don't move. They're still crying. The coaches then meet in the middle and say, that's not going to be enough. They go in the locker room. No one knows what's going on. Troy Aikman and Joe Buck basically trying to kill time. They announced this five minute delay. They keep saying it, but it's now been 15, 20 minutes. The analysts on ESPN are talking about this, just saying how horrible it is, but they even publicly say they don't have anything else to add. And it almost is like they're asking to get off the air. It, it was a weirdness to it. And they end up not playing the rest of that night, which obviously is the correct decision because it was more severe and nobody even knew at that point whether life was sustained for DeMar Hamlin what are your thoughts on your many years of experiencing the NFL and knowing what players go through on how this situation was handled? Because the NFL has since come out and said they did not administer a five-minute break. That is not what they did. Joe Buck said they did it. ESPN said they did it. I'm, I don't, I'm not accusing anyone of lying here, but the NFL is disputing what ESPN did, what Joe Buck and Troy Aikman did. And we'll get to the schedule here in a moment, but just how, how do you feel it was handled? Obviously, no one's expecting it when you go into the broadcast. No one's ready for that, really. The medical team, hopefully, and they luckily were, which is how we got to this situation of it not being worse. But there's kind of a funkiness to how it was handled, I guess, still. Well, it was unprecedented. Right. So the truth was there's not a guidebook or handbook that responded to that situation. <clears throat> and... The longer they stayed on the air without more <clears throat> facts, the higher anxiety levels grew. So the point is, normally, if you're watching some tragedy, there are continued updates with more facts and information. Yeah, they didn't have any, right? He said what they had to say right after the injury. They had nothing more to say. So just leaving a blank picture then quickly it it, yeah. it jumped out of the narrow football genre. And I turned to CNN and CN, uh, MSNBC and Fox, and they all were running it. So that in and of itself was unusual. I don't think we can be too critical of uh, how it was handled. Um, does somebody have a better way to handle it? That they I guess the pushback, Lee, would be, do you think it should have been called as being canceled for the night sooner? Because I'm not criticizing my colleagues in media. They they were left on the hook. And I, again, I'm, I'm sure Joe Buck and Trayman weren't just making things up. They were getting cool things. They're trying to provide their opinions. They didn't want to be on the air as long as they were, I'm sure. But should it have been called sooner? And do you think the players and coaches force the NFL's hand? Because the difference here, I guess, is you know with the NFL versus we saw a player go down in a hockey game many years ago in the NHL. We, we've seen this in other sports, but the NBA and NHL have 82 games. They lose one. They don't have to worry about making it up, really. In the NFL, they still got to probably think about if they're making this up or not. All they right now have announced they're not going to play it the rest of this week. They've left the door open to play it later. It does have playoff implications, so they probably are going to fit it in. They did have to do that with games during the COVID year. And they just have so little wiggle room to, to tweak the schedule. But it felt like the coaches and players, by basically saying five minutes not enough, they go in the locker room and basically saying we're not going to go back out there tonight without an update force the NFL's hand? Should they have called it sooner? Do you think the players and coaches forced their hand or did they need to wait for the facts? Maybe is why we had to wait as long as we did. I think you need to wait for the facts and have an understanding. I'm not critical of the NFL. This was unprecedented. Yeah. It was happening in real time and they canceled the game, which is something that outside of crazy weather and fires, they never do. So they came to the ultimate right conclusion. Now, as to playing the game, um, teams go the whole season fighting for home field advantage. And so many different decisions are made. Look, if it wasn't for home field advantage, then you probably don't have Josh Allen playing for the Bills, and you probably don't have Joe Burrow playing. They're probably resting the players for the playoffs and not risking injury to them so that the critical nature of this game and look they play pro football on saturday 
Sunday, Monday, Thursday. It doesn't have to be played on a weekend. And I covered a Steelers Ravens game, if you remember, in 2020 on a Wednesday. Because right. it, it was postponed three times because COVID crept up in the Ravens locker room. The, Different things occurred with the pandemic, and they end up having to play it in the afternoon on Wednesday. So they could dump it there somewhere. But it is a game that matters. Yeah, I mean, you hate – obviously, this would be a horrible event no matter who it happened to, whether it's Demar Hamlin or a player that no one had heard of who's not a star and just got in for one play, or if it happened in a game that mattered in the season or teams were eliminated already. But this was a premier game with two – franchise QBs, two contending teams fighting for home field, and even other teams had implications for the postseason off of this game, Steelers being one of them. So, you know, this game game did matter, unfortunately. Without being a mind reader and not minimize in the slightest the life and death critical nature of this, if that player came out of his coma or whatever induced state he's in, and was asked whether or not the team should play the game. Do you have any doubt what his answer would be? 100%. Yeah, he's going to want, he obviously would want his team to play. I'm sure if he was told after the fact they made a decision to not play and it somehow hurt his team or his team is punting games. And this is a team that has a chance to win a championship. So do the Bengals. I'm sure he'd be, yeah, I, I know him from being a Pittsburgh kid in his time at Central and Pitt, and obviously now in the NFL, he he would be more than upset about that decision. So, yeah. I, I think we should try to be easy and not so judgmental on every part of this. The good news is the whole country is praying for this young man. and And you saw the depth of the affection and support for him on his own team and across the league. So I think people are responding as well as they can. Um, The number one issue is his health and safety and uh, trauma and stress on his family and everything else. But I think that you have a whole country (laughs) that didn't know who this player was that are all sort of putting collective energy behind um, uh, and, and I believe prayer and collective energy can be helpful at times in a situation and it's happening. Certainly for those who are family members, friends, teammates, etc. I'm sure that the good vibes are helping them in some type of way and, and the one blessing in disguise that has happened DeMar Hamlin has a charity that he started from his time at Pitt. His goal was $2,500. He just wanted a little dump in the bucket to help those kids get some toys. We're looking at $5 million plus dollars last time I looked at things. So people have been people that he never had met before that are not Bills fans or not fans of any of the teams he's been on, maybe fan of a rival. They're dumping money in there. And yeah, we know him in the Pittsburgh market, but the country probably not as aware of DeMar Hamlin. He is now known, and everyone is praying for him. So blessing in disguise from it, maybe that that could be part of it to learn. When you do have a tragedy that happens in the world, you also are able to see who the good people really are, and that maybe there's more than you would have thought. There's a lot of reasons why people are down in our society these days, but when you have an event like this happen, it does show the good nature of the public that... Republican, Democrat, black, white, green, purple, orange, doesn't matter. Everyone's kind of providing good vibes and praying for this young man. And everyone is coming together in this, hoping he comes out of this okay. So that is, I guess, a positive to kind of see that happen. Well, you hard to prevent tragedy, but when it occurs, you are seeing the best side of human nature and the yeah. heart of people all of whom in their own way are trying to figure out how they can make a positive contribution. So I think we should be easy and not real judgmental. The last thing this needs is people uh, pointing fingers. Um, uh, A player suffered a tragic uh, uh, injury, fighting uh, for his life. People need across the country, if they're willing, to support him through good thoughts and prayers and other things. 
and um, um, it, in a totally tragic situation, it's having as happy an ending if he gets well as yeah. It's possible. Yeah, and from what we hear right now, and of course the information's kind of being slowly dripped. They don't want anything, obviously, that's not the truth. So we we do know one, you know, somebody who's in his camp as well as what the bills are put out there that so on a ventilator move from 100% to 50%, which is an improvement, but still fighting for his life uh, to to say the least. And obviously thoughts and prayers are in his direction. Just lastly, Lee, we we talked a lot about the schedule here. Obviously, what happened to this Bills Bengals game has been the focus for some, and it does implicate the season. It's not as important as life, obviously, and it wasn't important that night. They did do the right thing by canceling it and postponing it. I couldn't imagine them playing the next day either, but that game's not happening. But as we speak, the games this coming weekend are going to occur outside of that game that when or maybe will be made up, but it could even involve obviously those teams, just not against each other. What are your thoughts on? There are some that bring up the point that because this was an incident that was so tragic and so shocking and more than what we've ever seen before, even in your 40 years, more than what you've kind of seen before, that it affects more than the players on those teams. So the whole league should take a week off. You do have a break between conference championships and the Super Bowl. If you did take a week off here, you could just start up again a week later next week and then just not take the break off before the Super Bowl is played or you, you can't really move the Super Bowl, obviously, but you do have that week off. Do you take a break, cut that week off just for the mental state of the entire league? There are some players kind of leaning in the direction that they don't want to play their game, even if it's not against the Bills or Bengals right now. Time passes, and um, uh, I think they'll play the regular games again. Um there's no real etiquette in in grief and crisis. Yeah. In other words, no one issues you a handbook to say what's appropriate. The most important thing is to respect each individual's right to react as they will. But I think pro football will be played this weekend. I think it'll go on, and uh, we just uh, hope that the player gets uh, uh, well as fast as possible. Yeah, to say the very least. And, yeah, you do need to, to go on. I mean, they, they went on after Shazier and other situations. And, obviously, again, this is different. It does appear more severe, certainly to our eye, when you hear cardiac arrest. It's not a word I've heard before in the midst of watching a football game. So it's very, very serious. But eventually they are going to play again. Eventually the Bills and Bengals are going to play again. I would guess, from my experience, they're probably going to try to jam that game in at some point because it does matter to the season and the I, NFL. I, I think it, Players will be brought together. In- it could bring it could bring them together, right? You could oh, see I, a patch. I, it, it, I'm sure there'd be moments of prayer or whatever. We've seen that in other games. We've seen other teams, and, and certainly in Buffalo at Saber games, Pitt basketball did did, did, did uh, a moment of prayer prior to their basketball game. You're going to see that this could bring everyone together in a way. This could bring the league together in a way. There also is a lot of money involved, whether it be betting, fantasy, gambling, TV. They got to at some point come back. They're, they're not going to scrap the postseason or the rest of the season. They got to at some point come back. So it, it, they will come back. It, it will happen. It will be hard. And honestly, let's be real. The first game we all watch, that first play and that first tackle is going to be a little different than prior. So it, you're, we're all going to have to kind of consume it as well. But, yeah, they're, they're going to come back. It's eventually going to happen here. I definitely appreciate the time, Lee. Anything else you you do want to add? No, I think that's sufficient. Anyway, take it easy. Absolutely. Lee Steinberg here, sports agent, author. Once again, Lee Steinberg, sports agent, author. Glad to have him on. Uh, Again, mic drop here. You can find this program, of course, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Tune in everywhere you get your podcasts and also wherever I am covering Pittsburgh Sports Now, WV Sports Now, throughout the Sports Now family of networks, and also, of course, here in the Pittsburgh market. Again, you can find me on Twitter there, Twitter there, at MikeOsti11. And again, download, subscribe, this show, everything else that I put out here, especially these episodes of Mike Drop, and, of course, thoughts and prayers to Damar Hamlin. I'm a Central Catholic Viking, by the way, so I'm an alum of the same high school that he attended in Pittsburgh. Thoughts and prayers with him. It was nothing that I've seen 
in my years covering not really anything Lee had seen in his much longer time involved in the league. And uh, it did bring us all together in a way. So maybe that's a blessing in disguise. But I do think from knowing him that DeMar will be happy that did occur from this. But obviously his well-being is more important than games being played or money involved. Those are conversations that we now need to have, though. And eventually games will be played. Eventually money will be back on the table. Eventually these games will be on the air. You'll be watching them, consuming them. Joe Buck and Drakeman will be calling another game. They'll be on TV. These teams will be playing football again. And I'm sure that first tackle will be kind of jarring and it'll be hit differently for some than it's been. But it will go on. It will happen. And that's how DeMar would want it. Lee, Lee was perfect in that. DeMar Hamlin would want the season to go on, would want games to be played, would want the Bills to keep on fighting for the, fir- the first franchise Super Bowl in the history. He, he, he would want the Bills to go ahead and keep on moving and make sure they get home games through the playoffs, and they had the ASC title game in Orchard Park to get back to the Super Bowl for the first time since Jim Kelly took him there four years in a row and to get that first championship in Lombardi. He wants all that, I'm sure. So, again, thoughts and prayers to DeMar Hamlin, more important than anything else.